afternoon uh, wherever you're joining us from to merudi for the talk again i'll request my brother fex atuombe as we are starting all right uh sandi sana siri let's share sh- 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 let's say a short prayer <laughs> heavenly father thank you so much for bringing us here together i pray whatever we'll discuss today that it may be impactful for whoever is listening give us wisdom as well from your word and help us uh, be just vessels of honor in christ name i do pray amen mm. amen so yeah. last time we did romans today we are doing first peter and i don't know guys do you know anything about the background of the book of first peter and how it was written mm. yeah maybe just to see from the text because chapter 1 verse 1 is the like the salutation of it it was in a time that uh, peter was just writing to people who are scattered abroad the 12 the 12 tribes of israel and this is a salutation that has been found in many authors who had written to a jew audience for example james mm. james 1 also says that james a servant of god and of the lord jesus christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings so he was re- writing to these christians who are scattered abroad knowing that israel was a nation that wa- had been exiled since the time of uh, the first kingdom was uh, babylon mm. yes mm. uh, medo persia greece and then rome so these people used to be exiled and they were all over the world In fact it's until 1947 that 47 46 mm, that yeah. these people now came and Israel became a nation and now they started coming back to Israel to form their own nation. Mm. Yeah. It took them a while. Yeah, man, <laughs> the 1947 that's like the 20th century. Yeah. Mm, it's you a long time from those times. Mm, yeah, mm. true. True kabisa. So so you're saying that Peter is writing to a Jewish audience and I think he in a big distinction between Peter and Paul because mm, Paul mm. was an apostle to the gentiles yes like most of paul's letters or all mm. correct yeah what to gentiles mm. so paul na, hey i'm calling you paul <laughs> one of the you know you can't even say it eh many batiza na jina ya paulo yeah so is there anything else about about peter yes um and uh, it's it's very interesting this is one of those letters and i'm very grateful for fanko to just give us that background because it actually p- t- teaches us a lot of what's happening and the 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 kind of uh, situation these people are in so um maybe i'll just take you through what the text is all about and probably it even even as it kichangia yeah um the title is strangers in the world and right now tunajua especially if you're a believer in any society you know what it's like to think differently mm. at times uh, people may want you to conform to a certain things yeah. at times you might think differently what on ashanga what's wrong with this person so we all know what it means at least to be to be in a position whereby we are different and we are thinking differently and that's what peter is alluding to when he's talking about at least based on our title strangers in the world just a reminder that we're in this world for a short time and this is not where we belong for any believer so the text reads that peter an apostle of jesus christ to god's elect um exiled scattered throughout the provinces of pontus galatia cappadocia mean in kenya so unki pronounce vyote vyote wrong is on apitanga to asia and bithynia um who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctifying work of the spirit to be obedient to jesus christ and sprinkled with his blood grace and peace be yours in abundance wow. very interesting text very deep things and um i'm guessing this some some of those things which have been taught by so many people in different times so um franco metonzisha kutuambia where the letter is directed to and these are the places where the letter is supposed to be directed to and maybe just one of those three things that probably we'll be thinking about today is basically think about it this way we are strangers in the world and today we'll be talking about the whole essence of salvation and there are three questions which came into my mind when you're thinking about these things first of all is that why are we chosen as believers now put yourself in the shoes of those people maybe perhaps unaishi galicia perhaps unaishi cappadocia unaishi asia unaishi nairobi na vile tu aku mention nairobi na jua angi kama angi for boys manze na jua ngeta ja serial ngeta ja franco however but since that got in a short time now put yourself in 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 those people's shoes and there's so many things that's going to happen so first of all is that 
one of those questions to be looking at is that why are we chosen by God? The second question is that how are we chosen by God? And the last question to be looking at for what purpose are we chosen by God? So, um, probably uh, those questions need to answer from verse 2. And Peter says, now speaking to these individuals living in these different places, and it's just polite to say that he's speaking to the churches. Am I, am I, am I wrong? Or I think he's just speaking entirely to the churches, right? Mm -hmm. The Jewish churches, yeah. Yeah. right? I believe so. Yes. So, first of all, he's telling them to those who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. Now, it's interesting that whenever we come to this part, first of all, it reminds us of, of our position as believers. Like I told you, picture yourself as a person in living in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia. Think of it yourself living in during that time, and this letter is directed towards you. What Peter is telling you is that now this letter is meant to you who has been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. And this brings me back to the whole essence of salvation. I think what Peter is telling these people, first of all, in those heavy words, you know, He's telling them that you guys have been chosen by God. And this actually brings me to the question about salvation. Yeah. Now, what is Peter telling these people? Is he telling them that you are born again by the mere fact that God has actually make you to be, made you to be born again? Are you chosen by God simply because of something that you did well? Are you chosen by God out of merit? However you want to think about it, which trend a little deeper, it's... Peter is just telling these people that you're chosen based on the foreknowledge of God the Father. It's interesting when when we were looking at when I was looking at through these words, um, the concept especially of, of foreknowledge, it's beyond what sometimes we usually think of kama um tragetana kama kutabiri hali ya hewa or something of that sort. Yeah. I, I, I think the people who do weather forecasting are the most precise people that we'll have in this world. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's beyond just knowing what will happen in the future. But the word in the foreknowledge, and I think Frank will help us in here, this is what I got. It's beyond God having this omniscient, um, omnipresent kind of a thing that he actually looks into the future and he sees those people actually come to him. But it's the mere fact that he actually orchestrated the plan of salvation. Nikama, the, the best example Nikonao Nikama, think of yourself as Kutengeneza, if, if you guys are drawers or if you guys are artists. Wana uwa na ito artists, ati drawers. Ati drawers. Drawers na lao, no. What drawers na lao to pull to the manguo? Think of yourself yeah. as artist. Yeah. Now, if you're an artist, most of the time you have a concept in your mind. Ata kama haujeka kwa, kwa, kwa portrait, ama haujeka kwa canvas, you have that thing in your yeah. mind eco fashioned in your mind from the beginning to the end. Now, that's what Peter is alluding to. It's not the fact that just God had uh, sort of like he could see into the future, but he orchestrated the plan of salvation, and those people will actually be included in his kingdom. But that gives me a question. Yes. Which is kind of a, kind of a dumb question, but I ask it anyway, right? Mm. <laughs> he orchestrated it. Yes. Why? Why? That's a very good question. <laughs> Why did he orchestrate the plan of salvation? And I think Why? it's it's very clear if we consider the whole counsel of God. Uh, and when I say the whole counsel of God is that we should explain the more difficult scriptures to us using the simpler scriptures in the Bible. When we say in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world mm. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. He only did this not because we deserved it as men, mm. rather because he loved the world so much. He yeah. loved man so much whom he had created. Mm. So this was in his plan all through mm. that he will save people. So when we say for knowledge, he he knew beforehand he knew beforehand that he will save so god loves the world and and that's that's a good that's a good pointer because when i was looking at the word for knowledge and for new mm. first of all before even we go for new is a verb and it appears five times in the new testament yeah. Acts 26 verse 5 romans chapter 8 verse 29 mm. uh, romans 11 to first peter 1 20 and second peter 3 17 yeah. for knowledge which is a noun, mm. it appears two times 
in the text of Acts 2.23 and 1 Peter 1 to 2, which we are disca discussing today. Yeah, yeah. But we need to understand one thing. When we are talking about phoneme, mm. knowing, mm. Uh, it's not only about knowing, it's not just about, it's not just mm, a mere uh, prevision mm. that he provisioned, yeah. but it's more of for love. Mm. how he forloved us. Because when you look at how new has been used in the Bible, mm. Abraham knew his wife. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not always about just knowing. It is some, some more of intimate. For knowledge focuses attention on the distinguishing love of God whereby men are elected. Mm. It's not just about knowing, mm -hmm. but actually uh, the intimate how God was very intimate, moved with love, as so, in John 3.16. So you're saying that this, like, we could reread this verse too, who have been chosen according to the, for love of God. Yes, that will be the, the most... Because for love is not English. But yeah. Mm. Okay. So if you put that understanding, we'll mm. dismiss the idea that uh, people just think about how God knew Cyril, uh, will ultimately go to heaven no matter whatever he does no matter how much he might want to repent and uh, Francis uh, will go to hell no mm. matter what he does <laughs> it's more of in a general sense a general. it's more of in a general sense speaking to the church and how salvation will be acquired than in an individual sense I don't know <laughs> See, we are already behind time. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, does that now dispute the doctrine of election? Uh, no at all. The doctrine of election is totally biblical. The problem is understanding what is election. Mm. That's mm. The, because there so is the a difference between the election for knowledge and predestination. Mm. They are not the same word. But when you interchange these words as you are reading scripture, that's where people get confused. Okay. Yeah. And, and and I think just to add on, it's and I think it's probably human nature. We always want to be in control of yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Um, like a father wants to be in control of the family, mm -hmm. a mother wants to be in control of the business, mm -hmm. a kid wants to be in control of their marks, what a at the end of the at the end of the semester. It's and that's and that's where we, we come because God, in his sovereignty, because to be sovereign, it means you're the one who's calling the shots. Yeah. It, it does not depend on anyone. Mm -hmm. So God, according to scripture, he foreknew, meaning that he literally chose those who will actually belong to him. I know it's difficult to understand, but at the same time, you're serving a difficult God. <laughs> the mere fact that Kama Tungejua, the whole concept of God, it means Angeku, a very <laughs> miniature God, and it's not a God even worth of worshipping, if you yeah. could actually understand him completely. So it's, it's, maybe you should just go ahead, but it's the concept that God chose people. It's not just the fact that he saw the future, but mm -hmm. he actually chose people who are going to come into salvation. And that's, I know it, it bothered me for a long time. And at times when I think about it, I'm like, God, now does it mean that Ulem say, Atokoka? Does it mean that Ulem say, Mwingine Pi, Atokoka? But it is not in our place to know that. I think exactly. that goes back to that for knowledge of God. Yes, yes. It's not in our place. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. Our responsibility, the same thing that Jesus told us in Matthew, go ahead and make disciples in every nation. That's our responsibility. We don't do the conversion. We don't do the choosing. It, literally, it is not even in our ability to dictate if you're going to wake up the next day. How is it possible that you're going to dictate who will spend eternity with God? You see, that's technically even impossible. So we'll just allow, we'll just allow God to be God. Yeah. 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 But then it brings up the question of, mm. now if God already has chosen those people then do people truly uh mm. have free will the free will to choose god maybe we should mention something about that i th think that goes to the next part mm. so god has this for knowledge mm. and he actually has has uh has chosen people but what does peter tell us in the next part he tells us that through the sanctifying work of the of the spirit the fact that God has actually chosen, so who do, who does the choosing? It is God. Mm -hmm. It is God who does the choosing. He's the one who brings people into his family. 
And how does he do that? How does he bring people into his family? It is through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. When, I was in, when I was in high school, there's one thing you can append. Ara kama siko napenda sana ili kuanga this whole concept ya it was it ena ya siurali sijonga hapo hapa wote wale kama ulipita high school you know what a siurali is si zetu yeah. zikuwa zinaitwa weekend challenge ama weekend challenge <laughs> place two manze kulikuwa na upasi fulani na probably kulikuwa na this um, gospel artist yeah. alikuwa anakuja manze ilikuwa na shika kuruka yeah. I, I, i literally tell you this this particular person i know stem tacha but aliokoka every siurali <laughs> every siurali alikuwa anaokoka <laughs> mpaka ni kwa najiuliza eh hey, kwani amalizi <laughs> amalizi na dhambi zake kwa ni nyingi aje zinaitwa <laughs> jukwa show every siurali so it's and, and and we see once you have that mind that, that concept the fact that every single time you do something wrong you have to get born again like you have to reborn others you need aje like reborn 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 again get saved again and like born again and again and again and, and, again, again, and again and again, again. again. and yet peter is telling us that it is through the sanctifying work of the spirit that we get born again so the whole concept is this god has this foreknowledge and he has chosen us but how does he do that he does that by uh, by 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 making the holy spirit sorry by giving us the holy spirit and this is why ephesians chapter 2 i mean sorry ephesians chapter 1 the bible tells us that the spirit is the seal of mm-hmm. salvation yeah. like literally for you to be declared born again there is the seal of the holy spirit inside of you so you see now i don't know if you guys are getting where i'm coming from first of all salvation had nothing to do with you yeah the mere fact that you're getting born again has nothing to do with you as well mm. the mere fact that you read main in salvation has nothing, nothing to do, to with, do it. with you now this is the working of the holy spirit this is how god does it he imprints the holy spirit inside of us yes mm. wow i think this discussion is so so hot but i just want to highlight one thing mm. as we are as we are walking out it starts it very nicely peter an apostle of jesus christ yes. going back to our last week's discussion just it's so nice to just just do the connection mm. of the two and then It ends very nicely again. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Amen. How often do you greet people that way? Muombe nga seniaje mse. If you learn to. Is it maniaje mse? Aniaje brother. Don't suffice. Yeah. <laughs> Grace and peace be mm. yours in abundance. Such a powerful such a powerful greeting and it just leaves somebody thinking about. Mm. Yeah, and even okay. in the salutation like Peter calling himself an apostle. I think Peter uh, justly and uh, he deserved he deserved uh, he, he rightly deserved the title an apostle. And that's why you'll never see in any book of Peter him trying to defend his apostleship like Paul does because Paul was one of the disciples in fact among the first that were called by Christ and even the disciple that actually Jesus Oh you mean Peter Oh, Peter I mean Peter. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So okay. he does not defend himself about the issue. He's, he's an apostle of Jesus Christ and we can tell. I think every Christian can say Peter was an ap- I have never had a discussion of people doubting the apostleship of, of, of Peter. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so nice. So, hey, thank you so much for listening and our comment down below tell us what do you want us to talk about what are your thoughts on what you've just discussed and remember to share yeah amen fex could you uh, no fex prayers in <laughs> francis could you prayers out oh let's believe and pray oh lord thank you thank you for the great work that you are doing you said that you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and basically that's what we are here to do we are here to submit ourselves to you so that you may use us as agents to proclaim your word so that we may be able to edify the body of Christ so we, pl- we pray for our listeners our viewers even as they listen that it will be a seed that is planted that will grow 
to produce 6, 30, 60, and even 100 fold. Even as we go, as we may you continue and keep us with your, with your love, in your mercies, and may you control us with your spirit. Till next time, let's meet again. Amen. 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 Amen.